welcome back everyone. Uh, today we're uh, shooting the third series uh, in our direct primary care series. Uh, again, we have Ryan Besmer here with Strata Healthcare. And today we're going to be talking about direct primary care uh, in employer-sponsored health plans. And I'm, I'm really excited about uh, today's episode because, you know, obviously it's what I'm doing on a daily basis. And with our philosophy and model that we've built, um, you know, direct primary care is, you know, is one solution, you know, to not only controlling costs, but also being able to increase your benefits uh, within your plan. So, Ryan, I wanted to ask, you know, why would an employer want to engage in direct primary care for their employees? Yeah, good question. Um, direct primary care is is a great solution for for a company looking to better their benefits and I think depending on the size of the group uh, the the benefits that direct primary care could deliver is different so maybe I'll break it up into two sizes for lack of time if you're a small business under 50 employees and you don't offer any benefits right now uh, you probably don't offer benefits because insurance is so expensive. And you, even if you looked at the prices and you're like, I could offer my employees a high deductible plan, but the premium is going to be so much that no one would even join. Uh, uh, we, we see these all the time. And, and for an affordable fee like direct primary care, most direct primary care doctors are between $75 and $99 a month. And that covers all of your employees' primary care and their routine care. It's a great benefit to be able to offer them for, for, for a very reasonable price. Um, to be able to go to your employees and say all of your routine daily care and labs and stitches and sore throats and exams are covered. And here's the doctors that you can go see for that and you don't have to worry about co-pays or anything like that. And uh, thankfully there are options for those employees to then search on whether it be the exchange or other uh, medical plan options for a mm -hmm. catastrophic type insurance plan to maybe pair with it. So it's a great way for small businesses to offer a, a great health uh, health benefit. We mm -hmm. we we always say uh, instead of purchasing them health insurance, you're purchasing them health care mm -hmm. with direct primary care. So that's kind of a small business arm. Uh, for for larger businesses, and I'll I'll use maybe larger 200 plus life groups uh, employees with direct primary care. It's a great way to control your claims. So as you know. Uh, uh, the way you, you lower the cost of health care in an employer-sponsored plan is you control your claims. It's very hard to control your claims in an environment today where we as Americans are just not conditioned to shop around for health care. When I'm sick, I'm just going to go to the first doctor I can find, and I don't know how to compare prices and, and whatnot. And, uh, and so what we find a lot of times is that people are getting primary care. They're just getting it in urgent cares and emergency rooms and at specialists. And at places at the most expensive place to purchase your primary care is where they're getting it. And so we work with employers to say, why don't we invest in primary care with a primary care physician near your office uh, and almost pre-purchase it for your employees. Our goal is to have 90 uh, to a percent or more of all the care that a person needs happen in that clinic. Mm -hmm. And we don't file any claims. So none of those claims hit your health plan. And as we all know, uh, uh, if you don't have as many claims, your your cost goes down. And so. Um, for, for small groups, just to circle back, small groups, our, our, our benefit is that it's going to be an affordable benefit for you and your employees that I think you can be proud to put your stamp on and say that, that we offer this. From a large company perspective, I would say there's very few cost containment solutions out there like direct primary care and you should explore it as a way uh, to control your claims and frankly give a much better primary care experience to employees. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, you mentioned a few things there. but. You know, we preach over and over is, you know, really the only way that you can lower your costs within your plan is either reduce the number of claims being consumed or the price per claim. Right. And, you know, it's 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 not easy, obviously, but there are obviously there are strategies and solutions out there, you know. And as you mentioned, direct primary care is a great strategy um, and solution to, you know, reduce the price per claim. Right. And, and, well, and to build on that, we, we often compare. I know Ella Brock Norris does all kinds of insurance and, and we'll compare. Uh, direct primary care and, and health insurance to, to car insurance sometimes. And we'll say, you know, you would never think to use your car insurance to change your windshield wiper blades or, or rotate your tires. You, you, you pay for that up front. Imagine the complexity of trying to find who's a network to, to do something as simple as routine maintenance on your car. Yet I'm expected to use my insurance card for pink eye mm -hmm. or to get my allergy medication, no. right? And so we, th we think health insurance is really, really important. We just think that primary care shouldn't be involved in health insurance. And we think that it's much more efficient to purchase your primary care directly from the doctors around you. Yeah, absolutely. 
And I couldn't agree more with, you know, with what you just mentioned. One question that I had, you know, you had mentioned, obviously, let's say, for example, a 200 life group, um, you know, and they're, they're engaged in direct primary care uh, for their employees. How, how do you guys incentivize employees to get their routine checkups? Mm -hmm. You know, how, how are you reaching out to them? Because we all know, I mean, I'm, I'm guilty of it. You know, I don't go to the doctor every year I or I have it. So, um, how do you guys go about that? Yeah. Good question. It is tough uh, to, to, to your point. Uh, and I think anyone in the healthcare space, health insurance space would recognize getting people in to see a doctor is uh, increasingly difficult, especially men like us. We just <laughs> tend to wear our badge of honor. I haven't seen the doctor in a while. Uh, we, we frankly have a team of account management uh, um, uh, employees uh, that are focused on calling people to get them in for their first appointment. Uh, we work with employers to make sure that we're not billing them for uh, people who are not being seen by the doctors to make sure that we're providing as much value as possible. And then we will call them and call them and call them and call them and make sure that they get in for their first appointment, understanding it's not gonna cost them any money. They're gonna have plenty of time to discuss their needs with their doctor. And it's funny, as you mentioned, uh, uh, you're less likely to access the healthcare system if you don't know how to navigate it. And you're much less likely to access the healthcare system if you don't have a relationship with a doctor. And what happens is once that first appointment takes place and they know who the doctor is on the other end of the line, they are so much more likely to reach out and say, I've got this weird rash growing on my foot. What is it? Mm -hmm. Right? Instead of either not doing anything about it or going to an emergency room. So as much as we want to get people in for their first appointment just to establish care and have them meet their doctor, we recognize the real cost savings for employers down the road are going to happen because they had a relationship with the doctor because we worked so hard to get them in in the first place. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's, it's, a, it's a combination of Strata and our corporate staff reaching out to them uh, and also the doctor's offices as well reaching out to, to get them in. It's a battle, but we work really hard to make it happen. Yeah, absolutely. Because, you know, you and I both obviously understand the importance of you know, getting in for your routine checkups because, you know, you're going to you're going to catch that issue much sooner, you know, than two, three years down the road. And that, right. and that claim is, you know, hundred to three hundred thousand dollars right. um, and obviously has a significant impact on your on your plan. So, you know, definitely made some great points there. Um, now, when it comes to cost savings, obviously, if an employer were to engage uh, in direct primary care, what kind of cost savings could a, you know, a large employer with, let's say, we'll use the 200 life example. Sure. What kind of cost savings do you guys, have you guys ran any, you know, studies or, um, I guess, can you kind of give insight into that? I don't know if you have any specific examples with any of the groups that you work with, um, but you, can you kind of just give an insight into that? Yeah, yeah, good question. I, I, I will say I'm not going to speak specifically specifically to, to cost savings on, on groups, um, but if you're a larger group and you are self-insured uh, and, and you have, a let's say, a, a third-party administrator that, that pays your claims, and you know, you're thinking every year, how do we control our claims costs? Maybe you have a wellness program. Um, we have many examples and I would encourage you to contact Ellerbrock and they can put you in, in touch with Strata that, that we could maybe work on projecting this for you because it frankly just depends on what does your experience look like mm -hmm. uh, with your claims. We have a, a, since the very beginning of Strata, we have invested heavily into data analytics uh, because we wanna be able to project this for, for uh, uh, employers. I, I mentioned earlier primary care is an investment. Mm -hmm. We want to be able to as accurately as possible project what kind of return could you expect for that. And if we look at, at someone's claims, at a, at a company's claims, and we could say, here's all of the health care that your employees received that was maybe primary care that just didn't take place in a primary care clinic. Mm -hmm. um, people going to an emergency room for a headache or we've seen um, many emergency room claims for diaper rashes mm -hmm. for children. Uh, and we can project and say, what would those savings have been if they would have been in a direct primary mm -hmm. care clinic? So uh, on a case-by-case -case basis, we can do that uh, for employers. But I would say, think about all of the primary care that is taking place in your group. And it's $99 per employer per month. And, and, and hopefully we can create some savings up front for that. And then also think about what are the downstream savings like you talked about. Those are tougher to quantify. Uh, but if we can take someone that's pre-diabetic, pre make them a... A, an advocate of their own health care and get them healthy, the savings you'd experience 10, 20 years down the road are, are, are huge. Um, if you're not self-insured and you and you are, are, are fully insured through a, a, a common carrier, uh, the, co the cost savings are tough. Uh, there's not carriers or many of them out there that will give decrements on premium to purchase direct to primary care. Um, there are solutions out there where, we, where, where sophisticated uh, benefits advisors like like you all are, are able to change plan design to make it fit in. Uh, but I would say the best 
uh, employers to be exploring direct primary care are those that are on level funded plans or those that are currently self-funded. Mm -hmm. uh, and those are the ones that should be able to experience almost immediate cost savings with direct primary care. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, obviously we understand that, you know, direct primary care can, you know, as you mentioned, it's hard to quantify, but it can provide some significant savings when it comes to your, when your, it comes to your overall claim spend. So the last question I had for you um, is, you know, we've talked obviously, and you understand kind of how we look at things, um, you know, and we, we, we realize that there's a supply chain in healthcare. You know, you got your physician services, inpatient, outpatient, and prescription drugs. Now, one component obviously being physician services. Now, with over 60% of all doctors um, being owned by hospitals, you know, what kind of impact does direct primary care have on not only, you know, where employees are sent to get procedures done, because we understand, you know, not all doctors, but a lot of doctors are the sales force for hospitals. Right. So how do you guys go about, you know, I'm, you guys have preferred providers that you send people to as far as, you know, if someone needs to get in, uh, you know, let's say an, a knee scope, mm -hmm. um, how do you guys go about that process? Yeah, good question. From a from a from an employer perspective, we work within whatever the employer plan design would be uh, for re referral patterns. The last thing we want to do is send someone out of network mm -hmm. and have them receive a big big charge. What we're big fans of are when we can send someone to a low cost, high quality center where they're going to receive really great care um, at an affordable price. And and most of the time, not every time, most of the time, that's not the hospital system mm -hmm. where they're going to get that done. Um, and so direct primary care, I would say, is having an impact on, on the hospital systems in the sense that it's making them compete more for business from local mm -hmm. employers because independent shops are able to, to maybe uh, uh, get more of those referrals. Our physicians are not required by hospital systems to have certain referral patterns uh, necessarily. But, you know, when you project cost savings, that's another component of this, right, mm -hmm. is because, uh, yes, we can save money on the primary care. Uh, but if, if, if through the plan design and referral patterns and our, our physician's ability to work with you uh, uh, can be sending people to places like the Surgery Center of Oklahoma, that's a cash price surgical center that does really great work, um, uh, that's a great opportunity for cost savings for employers. So we are all for anything we can do to save employers money. Uh, and the reason for that is we love the groups we work with. Uh, and we also know that the majority of the healthcare dollars that are spent in the U.S. come from employers. And if we're going to fix healthcare, we got to start there. Mm -hmm. uh, so anything we can do to work with employers to save money and referral patterns, and we're all for that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and the reason why I wanted to ask that question is, you know, the 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 average individual when they go to access care, you know, a lot of the times they're trusting their doctor. Right. And you know, with the number of these doctors being owned by hospitals anymore, you know. Are these, you know, it, it just, there's a little bit of conflict of interest there, you, you know. Well, I mean, the perfect example, you know, you end up in the emergency room and gosh, we sh you need an image. You know, we need to do some imaging and come on down the hall to the imaging center yeah. and we'll get it done right here. And, and, and these are the doctors and the staff, they're not bad people. It's just the system is set up in, mm -hmm. in, 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 in a bad way. And, um, and so of course, I mean, our goal when I heard a doctor say one time that, that, um, when a doctor takes the, the oath to, to do no harm to their patients, they're, they're also taking an oath to do no financial harm mm -hmm. to their patients. And I think that doctors have at least some responsibility in making sure that uh, they are making sure that their, that their patients are going somewhere that, that they can afford. And so, you know, locally in the Nebraska market, Strata has contracts with imaging centers and uh, different uh, 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 medical providers that publish their cash rates so patients know what they're going to pay when they go there. Uh, because you're right, there, there are uh, uh, perverse incentives out there uh, that can cause a patient to walk away and be sent home with a bill that, that they can't pay. Mm -hmm. um, and even if they have good insurance, we call these people the functionally uninsured, mm -hmm. the people that have a deductible for their health plan that is more than the savings in their bank account. Yeah. They have a health yeah. plan that they can't use, right? So. So uh, we were anytime care falls outside of direct primary care, anytime it falls outside of our four walls, we want to make sure that they're going somewhere that um, uh, they know how much it's going to cost and they know how it's going to impact them financially. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and you obviously made a great point. Um, you know, a lot of this, obviously, all the stuff you said, you know, is is why direct primary care is is a solution um, and a strategy when it comes to controlling costs. And also, you know, not only that, but you know, including improving the quality of life for your employees because you know when they're regular you know getting to their doctor and seeing them on a regular basis obviously you know that that's 
only going to benefit them down the road. Right. So, and, and obviously it's going to benefit them when it comes to their overall claim spend as well. So I appreciate that information. Um, that wraps up uh, today's episode. If you guys uh, have any other questions about um, direct primary care, feel free to reach out to me and I can put you in touch with Ryan. Um, again, we do believe that this can provide, you know, some serious value. Um, and it also, it's a huge benefit um, for employees when it comes to, to their overall uh, care that they're receiving. And then also, not only that, but the cost of, you know, your, your guys' uh, employ, employer's overall claim spend. So thanks for listening today. Um, I hope everyone has a great rest of their day. Thanks, Phil.